Hey, it's Mike here, and today a video about gout. We're going to see what the science has to say about diet and gout, and in particular, how a vegan diet could affect gout directly and indirectly. We're gonna look at about 10 or more studies on this. And as usual, we'll try to keep it straightforward and understandable, so I guess it's time to spout about gout. If you wanna keep watching after that. <laughs> All right, let's go first off of what is gout? Well, it is a type of inflammatory arthritis, so we're talking about these painful, swollen, inflamed joints on, you know, your fingers or your toes or other joints. And historically, as we'll elaborate more on, it was known as the disease of kings. I'm a king and I would love to dance about, but I can't court no hotties this spring because I've got gout. Yes, that was directly quoted from the ancient records. Well, this is not so ancient anymore because it appears that one in 25 people in the US experience gout. And I say experience gout because this is something that appears to come in an episodic fashion. You have gout attacks, which is bad, but it, it could be worse if they lasted longer. I mean, usually we're talking about in the realm of a week and sometimes up to a few weeks, but still, it's good that it's not just constant. This is extremely painful because the cause of it is tiny crystals that build up in your joints, basically poking you from the inside. And those crystals are made of uric acid. We'll talk about how that forms. But first, I'm really sorry to anybody that has this. This appears to be super duper painful. I mean, under the WebMD video of these animations, you can see people saying that like, They've had broken bones and all these things, and by far this is the most painful. And from this paper, Thomas Sydenham, an English physician in the 1600s who actually had gout, described some cases, but I think his experience was actually a little bit mixed in here. <laughs> Sorry to him. He said, the patient goes to bed and sleeps quietly until about two in the morning when he is awakened by a pain which usually seizes the great toe, but sometimes the heel, the calf, and the leg, or the ankle, the pain resembles that of a dislocated bone, and this is immediately succeeded by a chillness, shivering, and a slight fever. The pain, which is mild in the beginning, grows gradually more violent every hour, and on and on. You can pause to read. But what I got mostly from all of that is that I'm gonna start calling my big toe my great toe from now on. That's just way cooler. So by now you're probably thinking, how does that uric acid build up? Or you're going, I freaking already know, I can feel it right now. And that all has to do with purines. And of course, how your body is able to clear out the uric acid. We'll get to that in a bit. But uric acid is from the breakdown of purines in food. And purines are interesting because they are actually parts of DNA and RNA, which is why they're going to be to some degree in pretty much all foods. And so we can all feel a bit smarter. Flashback to middle school science class. You have that adenine, that thymine, that cytosine, and that guanine. Well, it turns out the adenine and the guanine are both purines. So two out of four, 50%. Purines, you just failed the science test. We're all getting flashbacks. Again, the amounts in food do vary, but purines are a bit like Purina dog food. They're both largely from ground up animal parts. We have this 2008 study from China, which in a way cataloged the westernization of their diet in different areas because they found that city dwellers had much higher prevalence of that high uric acid level in the blood compared to rural residents. And in particular, quote, these discrepancies were highly correlated with economic development as manifested by the increase of daily consumption of meat and seafood. And to highlight a study that Dr. Greger dug up on this topic, so thanks to Nutrition Facts for laying the foundation for some of this video, it's a little bit unethical in that they were like, let's try and just create some gout attacks in some patients. So they had seven patients. They first fed them a, quote, meat-laden meal, and they saw those uric acid levels go up. And then alcohol also makes them worse. So they gave them some alcohol. Six out of seven of them had gout attacks. That's some ethical science right there. <laughs> but what about plants that are a bit higher in purines? Because some are, I mean, beans have a reasonable amount, for example, but looking to the literature, beans were inversely associated with gout. They were associated with a decreased risk of it. Well, it turns out that this appears to be the rule for plant-based purines, and that could be for a few reasons. We'll cover one in a second, but from this study, quote, intake of purine-rich vegetables was not associated with hyperuricemia or high uric acid levels. There could be a few reasons. One is the inverse relationship also between fiber intake and gout. The fiber might bind to the uric acid and prevent it from being absorbed in the gut as much. Add the fact that organ meats are really high in purines, no fiber, organ meats. Yeah, the carnivore diet would be horrible for gout. 
Just saying. But to bring it all home by saying the same thing with more words, this 2019 review concluded that, quote, there are no data from long-term cross-sectional or interventional studies that would show that high purine plant-based foods represent a clinically meaningful increased risk for hyperuricemia or gout development. Get wrecked, gout. Gout wrecked. But we're talking about individual foods. Could it be that a diet made up of these individual food choices could possibly have a positive effect well, thankfully we have a newer study from 2020. It was out of Taiwan and it looked at both vegans and vegetarians and in annoying fashion, lumped them together like a lot of studies do for more statistical power. And the results were quite astounding. They found a stunning 60 to 67% lower gout risk of the vegetarian group, depending on whether or not they adjusted for that high uric acid level in the blood of certain individuals. Either way, we're talking about like a two thirds lower risk of gout for people that are eating more of those plants and not the animal flesh. Really good. Now it would be cool if we had a randomized control trial, but we at least have one where they put people on a diet. In this case, it was a alkaline vegetarian diet. And of course you might expect some effect of alkaline buffering the acid. Who knows? Our body does a really good job of buffering pHs and on and on. So a lot of times that can be really overblown. But in this case, the results are quite interesting. They put people on this alkaline vegetarian diet and they measured their super saturated uric acid, which is apparently a better marker of actual crystallization risk within the body and the joints and so on. And they found that it reduced by 95% Pretty shocking. And while we're talking about vegetarian diets, there have been certain indicators that dairy lowers uric acid, making people think oh, it could be helpful, but it appears from some longer term studies on low fat dairy, like this one, two cups worth of skim milk powder, did not appear to have a positive effect here. But this brings me to the next area, which always comes up in all of these disease vegan diet studies, and that is inflammation. Yes, from the study, it appears that CRP, C-reactive protein, that inflammation marker, does go up during gout attacks. And of course, as I mentioned before, from this study, putting people on a vegan diet appears to lower pretty quickly their C-reactive protein by about 30%, so that is obviously huge. And back to that vegetarian study from Taiwan that we covered a bit ago, quote, vegetarian diets tend to contain lower saturated fat, higher unsaturated fat, and phytochemical rich plant foods. These may prevent inflammatory responses that trigger gout attacks by dampening the activation of NLRP3 inflammasome. The inflammasomes are coming. Get to the chopper. Someone take away my channel. <laughs> and since this video is already getting a little bit long, let's quickly cover the risk factors, which honestly have a pretty big effect, especially one, and we're talking about diabetes, obesity, and chronic kidney disease. As you might've figured out, your body would be filtering out that extra uric acid through the kidneys as it likes to do. So if you are having any lower kidney function, obviously that's gonna make things worse. So these things go hand in hand, kidney failure, and gout. But we have several studies outlining the benefits of a plant-based diet for chronic kidney disease, and that's all fun and games, but it's so interesting to just look at those amazing anecdotal cases, which are not very scientific, just because it's fun. For example, this woman not only really improved, she says reversed her chronic kidney disease by improving her kidney function, but also got rid of her gout. She says at a doctor's appointment three weeks after she'd gone plant-based, that is not long at all, her kidney function markers had greatly improved and her doctor took her off her gout medication. Within six months, the arthritis in her hands was gone and yay, more energy. And of course she ended up losing 20 pounds. Then she says reverse her chronic kidney disease, eliminated gout and high blood pressure on and on and on, boom, boom, boom. And this isn't a crazy fringe idea. Even organizations like the National Kidney Foundation says, hey, you should eat more plant-based foods such as vegetables and grains in place of animal foods such as red meat to help prevent slow the progression of chronic kidney disease. Cool stuff. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the last two things, regardless of diet, that are super important here that are in a lot of literature, and that is alcohol consumption and hydration. Obviously, drinking more water is great, and also alcohol has negative effects, including dehydration, which can lead to those gout flare-ups. So keep that in mind, but in the end, the main point here is that animal foods appear to increase the risk 
of gout? Well, the plant-based foods, the plant kingdom appears to have positive effects on several levels for several reasons, all from fiber and probably even the water content of those foods, as well as lowering inflammation and also not being able to raise uric acid as much as one would expect. All right, that's it for today. Feel free to like and subscribe, and I hope everybody has some happy joints. Those pictures of gout that I had to look at, Google Images immediately shows you the worst ones when you're searching for things. So uh, yeah, I'm sorry to people who have it. And that's it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.